Good day, students. Our learning intention today is learning how to multiply fractions. When we multiply fractions, there are a number of strategies we can use. Our success criteria today will be how to find a unit fraction and then carry on the multiplication. Second, we will also learn the process of multiplying two fractions. You already know your times tables and you also know about factors and highest common factor. In fact, highest common factor will come very handy when we have to simplify our fractions by cancelling out before we carry out the multiplication. Let's get going. Example one. Two thirds of 15. Now, to perform two thirds of 15, we'll apply both success criteria to this example. But let's start with a visual. Let's say we have 15 bananas. You can group them into groups of five each. So the first lot is five bananas, the second lot is five bananas, and the third lot is also five bananas. So as you can see, two thirds means the two lots, a group of five and another group of five. So two thirds of 15 is equal to 10, and you can basically count all those bananas. But let's apply success criteria one. So if I have two thirds of 15, now the off simply means multiply. So what I need to do is to write 15 divided by three, just to find the unit fraction that gives me five then my next step is to take that five and multiply by two and that gives me ten that gives me ten in other words what we've just done with success criteria one is simply two thirds of 15 is equal to 15 divided by 3 the denominator there and multiply by 2 the numerator now think of board mass order of operations and so 15 divided by 3 would give you 5 and then multiply by 2 and that gives you 10. You have to work from left to right because division and multiplication can be done at the same time, but you need to work from left to right. Now, our second success criteria, when I'm giving two thirds of 15, now 15 is a whole number. So remember, I can rewrite this as 2 over 3 multiplied by 15 over 1. Yes, <clears throat> 15 over 1 is still 15. Now my next step would be to multiply the numerators together 2 times 15 and multiply the denominators together 3 times 1. But I'm not in a hurry to do 2 times 15, 30, because as I have written the numerators together and the denominators together, I can see that 3 can go into 15. That's where the highest common factor comes in. So the 3 would go into 3 and give you 1 and go into the 15 and give you 5. 
So you have at the numerator side two times five, and the denominator is one times one. Now two times five is 10, and one times one is one. So 10 over one, and 10 over one is simply 10. So there you have it. There are two separate ways you can do this. Success criteria one and success criteria two. But there is a third option I've shown you now, which is visually dividing your things into three parts and collecting two lots of it. Now, success criteria one, you take that whole number 15, divide it by that denominator to find the unit fraction, and then multiply the result by the denominator. In the second criteria, success criteria, second strategy of solving this problem, we rewrote that 15 as a fraction by just simply doing 15 divided by one and multiplying the numerators together and multiplying the denominators together. Then you use highest common factor to simplify. Even if you've gone ahead at this point to write this as 30 divided by 3, you will still get a result of 10. Although multiplying the numerators out and multiplying the denominators out sometimes tend to make the problem a bit difficult, as you will see later on. So it is best to look for the HCF and cancel out before you proceed. But you can do it that way too. Thank you very much. Let's move to the next slide. Now, we have two fifths of 40. We have to work out two fifths of 40. So using success criteria one, where we find a unit fraction. So you have to find one fifth of 40. Yes, the question says two fifths of 40, but you want to find the unit fraction of 40. So you do one fifth of 40, which is simply 40 divided by five, which gives you eight. And then you take the numerator, which was two, and you multiply by eight, and that gives you 16. So two fifths of 40 gives you 16. Let's use success criteria two to solve this problem. So we have two fifths of 40. So all that you're doing is you're writing this as two fifths multiplied by 40 divided by one. And as you know, you write your numerators, multiply your numerators together, multiply the denominators together without actually carrying out the calculation. Now, the highest common factor will be five because five can go into 40. So five here, one and five into the 40, eight times. So you left with the numerator is two times eight and the denominator is one times one. And two times eight is 16 and one times one is one. And 16 over 1 is simply 16. So that there you have it. Easy done. Now let's um, try and solve these problems for ourselves. At this stage, you can pause the video and try and do it yourself. But it's a very simple process. You can do this in your math books. It says, for each of the group of objects, color the stated fraction. You need to color the stated fraction. Just a bit of visualization here. One third. We want to do one third of 12. Now, that's very easy. That's four of that. 
that's one third because if you divide your 12 into three equal parts, each part would be comprising of four items. So one third of 12 is simply four, which is the same as, as we've described before, 12 divided by three multiplied by one. And 12 divided by three will be four multiplied by one. 4 multiplied by 1 is to 4. That's the calculation part. That's for the visual learners so that it's much easier for everyone to understand how to multiply whole numbers, fractions and whole numbers. Right, so 2 thirds of 12. Again, 12 has to be divided into three equal lots. So that's one lot, that's the second lot, and that's the third lot. So we have to shade two thirds. So basically we're shading that whole lot and this whole lot, which is eight items. So two thirds of 12 is simply eight, which by the calculation using the unit method success criteria one, it's simply 12 divided by 3 multiplied by 2. Remember, you always have to use the order of operations. And so work from left to right where division and multiplication can be done at the same time. 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 2. And that gives us 8. Easy done. Now we've got 15 and we want three fifths of 15. Now, again, all that we need to do is to divide our 15 into five equal groups. So that will be one, two, three, four, and five. And each group has is made up of three things. So three fifths will be three lots of that, that's one lot. That's the second lot. And that's the third lot. So that will be nine. And again, by the calculation, remember, it's 15 divided by five, multiplied by three. 15 divided by five, We'll give you three multiplied by three and that gives you nine. easy down more questions to be solved in your math books you can pause again and write these things in your book show the working out and you can continue the tape to see the working out now for question a the first part has been done for you a quarter of 12 means 12 divided by 4. And 12 divided by 4 will give you 3. And here it should be multiplied by 1, the numerator, of course. It will still be 3. So if you go to the next one, B is just going to be 30 divided by 6 multiply by 1. 30 divided by 6 is 5 and 5 times 1 is to 5. So this would be 45 divided by 5 multiply by 1, which is simply 45 divided by 5 and that's 9. 9 times 1 is to 9. Now here will be 36 divided by 12 multiply by 1 and that will be 3 times 1 which is 3. Right, more problems to be solved in your math books. We want to do two fifths of 10 and the first one has been done for you using the unit method unit fraction method 
which is set criteria one. So 10 divided by five multiplied by two. So this would be 14 divided by seven multiplied by three. 14 divided by seven will give you two multiply by three and that will give you six this is 18 divided by three multiply by two 18 divided by three will give you six multiply by two will give you 12. that is 50 divided by 10 multiply by 9. So again, 50 divided by 10, that will give you 5. Then multiply by 9, that will give you 45. And finally, you have 56 divided by 8, multiply by 5. 56 divided by 8, that will give you 7. Multiply by 5, that will give you 35. That will give you 35. Now, let's switch gears and now start using success criteria two, where we multiply two fractions together. And in this case, let's pay attention and use HCF or factors in general to help us simplify because when we write these fractions, we always want to have them in simplified form. Now, the first one has been started for us. One fifth of eight is one fifth times eight over one because eight whole can be written as eight over one. So you multiply your numerators together, which will be one times eight. And we multiply the denominators together, which is five times one. And one times eight is eight, and five times one is five. Because there are no common factors, we'll just write what the products are. Now, eight divided by five, how many times will five go into eight? It will go one time, remaining three, so three over eight, I mean three over five. So one, three over five. Next question, three quarters of seven. So we'll write our three quarters here and seven will be seven over one. And again, this is equal to three times seven over four times one. Now, because there are no common factors, we'll carry out the multiplications the products so 3 times 7 give you 21 and 4 times 1 will give you 4. <clears throat> now you ask yourself how many times will 4 go into 21 4 times 5 is 20 and 21 take away 20 will give you 1 so remainder 1 so 1 over 4. more problems solve them in your math books showing working out again the first one has been started for us one third times half so one third times half means multiply the numerators together multiply the denominators together look for common factors there are no common factors i can see so one times one will be one and three times two will be six. Three fifths times a quarter. Again, it will be three multiplied by one, and it will be five multiplied by four. Remember, <clears throat> you multiply the denominators together, you multiply the denominators together look for common factors or hcf 
to help you simplify other than that carry out the calculation so three times one will give us three and five times four will give us 20. next now with these ones hcf can help us simplify as we can see you have two over seven multiplied by three over eight remember as we have said before you carry out two times three over seven times eight now this two can go into two one time and it can go into that eight four times so now we have one times three and we have seven times four and one times three will give us three and four times seven will give us 28. question b so four can go into four one time and can go into 12 three times when we cross out you cannot cross out horizontally you can cross out vertically or diagonally so these three cannot go into the nine because they are all denominators so you go five times one and we've got three times nine so that will give you five and three nine is 27. and finally two go into the four two times and go into ten five seven will cancel seven give you one and one so you got two times one at the numerator and one times five at the denominator and two times one is two and one times five is five two fifths you see if you've carried out this you'll get four times seven will give you 28 and seven times 10 will give you 70. you cannot leave this as your fraction it's not simplified because if you look very carefully 14 can go into both of them and it becomes harder when you carry out this way without simplifying first because then you got to know that this can be divided by 14 and that can be divided by 14 that's a bit harder isn't it 28 divided by 14 will give you 2 and 70 divided by 14 will give you 5. so it's much easier to look for common factors and cancel them out first before you carry out the multiplication for the numerators and the multiplication for the denominators in that way you get your simplified fraction straight away Think about it that way. Final question for the day. We are the Vu family. There are four children, four children, and each child earns $20 for doing small jobs each week. Which of, they are each given a number of jobs to do, and they earn pocket money based on the fraction of jobs they finish. Who earns the least? That's the smallest pocket money. There are two ways we can do this. We can use these, set these things up as fractions. That will be three over four. That's four over five. That's five over eight. And that's seven over 10. We can work out these fractions out of the 20. 
and see who gets the smallest money or on the other hand the small one who gets the smallest money is the one with the smallest fraction anyway so if i arrange three over four four over five 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 over eight and seven over ten well it's very easy for me to find write all these things that's why we did the equivalent fractions the equivalent fractions with the same denominator then we can simply compare the numerators so if we look at four five eight and ten and if you did the multiples of four multiples of five multiples of eight multiples of ten then you'll find out the lowest common multiple is equal to 40. It's equal to 40. That will be the lowest common multiple for these numbers. You can write out the four times tables, the five times tables, the eight times tables, and the 10 times tables. And you'll find out 40 will be the lowest common thing. I can do that quickly for you here. For 4, you got 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. 44. Let's stop there. If you take 5, we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Let's stop there. And if we take 8, we have 8, 16, 24. 32, 40, let's stop there. And if we take 10, you've got 10, 20, 30, 40. So for all of them, you can see that 40 is the lowest common multiple that you come to. So LCM is 40. Now, what did I do to the 4 to get 40? You multiply by 10. 4 times 10 is 40. So you multiply this 3 also by 10. 3 times 10 will give us 30. This 5, how did it become 40? Because that's the de de denominator which has changed. Where times 8? 5 times 8 is 40. So multiply this 4 by 8. 4, 8 is 32. What about that? Multiply by 5. So we have to multiply this also by 5. Then that gives us 25. And this was multiplied by 4. So times 4, that gives us 28. Now you can see the essence of your times tables. It's very, very important because to solve these problems and all that, you need to know your times tables to know your LCM, the highest common factor, and all this other stuff is rooted in our times tables. That's the first thing. You need to revise your times tables. Yes, the calculator is there to help us, but if you have no concept about times tables, the calculator is not going to do anything. So please, let's focus on our times tables. It's the basics for most of these things that we are doing. Now, as we can see, because they all have a denominator of 40, the numerator 25 is the smallest. So that's the smallest fraction. The smallest fraction is 5 eighths. And 5 eighths is Kimberly. So the one that gets the least pocket money is Kimberly. 5 eighths. Any questions? If there are no questions, it's a wrap for today. Now, as you know, 
we're looking at multiplying fractions. This is the first part of it. There'll be another lesson on multiplying fractions where we go deeper into multiplying um, fraction with fractions and also multiplying mixed numbers. That'll be the next lesson. But today we've learned two main strategies. The first strategy is finding the unit fraction and multiplying by the denominator. For example, if you have um, two fifths of 20, then what we are saying is using the unit fraction method, you do 20 divided by five, multiply by two. 20 divided by 5 multiplied by 2 and you'll get 4 times 2 and that will be equal to 8. So 2 fifths of 20 is 8. That is one method we used. The other method we have used is to have the 2 fifths And write the 20 as 20 divided by 1. So you have two fractions. In which case you have 2 times 20 divided by 5 times 1. The 5 will cancel there and give you 1. 5 will go there and give you 4. And so you have 2 times 4 which is 8 divided by 1 times 1, which is 1, which is simply 8. So these are the two main strategies we've applied. Of course, there's a third strategy whereby you can draw some diagrams and divide, can draw some circles, 20 circles, for example, divide it into five equal parts and then pick two lots of it. I hope we've learned a lot about multiplying fractions today. Thank you very much. Our next lesson will look at multiplying more fractions. Thank you. That's the end of our lesson. Bye.